give up four touchdowns on your first four drives. It's going to be a long night after the replay. Yeah, I mean, I thought our guys did a battle in the second half, but I think we put ourselves in a hole in the first half. Um, you know, we, we have been a really good team against the rush coming into this game, but did not do a very good job against the rush tonight. You know, obviously, uh, could not control their run game. Um, you know, they played with two and three tight end sets, and um, we, we, did, we did not do what we had to do to defend their run game tonight, so. Defense has been the one constant spot since you've been here. How can you talk about Jerry as an arrow and how you can justify keeping him at this point? Yeah, I, I'm just talking about tonight. We didn't do a good job in the in the run game. There's, there's, we we played um, even this year um, very well on the defensive side of the ball. I think our defense has improved. Our defense improved last year. Um, you know, you look at some of the the games we did early in the year. I thought we played really well tonight. We did not play well in in the rush category. You know, to give up that many yards. You know, in in coming into the game, we were 13th in the country in rush defense and didn't do a good job with it. So. Talk about Ethan Garbers and his performance and his, yeah. his first significant snaps in college. Um, Garbers is a cool customer. You know, it, it, you know, we, uh, we knew what we were going to get with him. <clears throat> you know, he played a little bit at the end of the Hawaii game, um, and then played the last five snaps in the in the Oregon game. Got to come out and play. Um, you know, in this environment, you know, this is always a tough place to play. Utah has a has a great home field advantage. The crowd does an unbelievable job. Um, but for Garbers to come out, you know, and down a couple guys. Um, but just to, to rally the troops and to continue to play and, you know, battle right down to the end. Um, <clears throat> ha happy with the way Ethan played. Um, you know, he had one pick, but it was on a tip ball. Um, besides that, I thought he did a good job with the ball. Um, I think he kept a lot of things alive with his legs. Um, you know, he's, he's probably a little bit better athlete than most people give him credit for. Um, but we knew that, that he, could, he could do some things for us. So um, for the first game he played, I, I, was, I was happy with what, he, what we got out of Ethan tonight. So you have the, the Ty Jordan, Aaron Lowe patch on, on your arm. What was that like being, being here for them, retiring the number and honoring the two of them tonight? Yeah, I mean, I, it was a, a tragedy that I think is a very difficult thing. And I talked to Witt about it, you know, when it happened. Um, you know, just the, the whole thing. You know, they, they were high school teammates together. Um, they grew up together. Um, Aaron wore Ty's number because of what happened. And then for, for it to also happen to him, you know, in, less than a year, you know, for, for this football team um, to go through that, to lose two of their teammates, you know, that's, uh, that's a real difficult thing to process um, for anybody. Um, but, um, you know, we, we just felt like as a, as a group, um, everybody in college football, has got, there's a brotherhood there. Our players have tremendous respect for everybody in Utah, and we just wanted them to know that we were there for them. And, um, if they were going to honor them, they asked us if we would wear a patch, and we said we would love to wear a patch. Coach, your defense uh, it started out the year as being a pressuring defense where you, you went after the line of scrimmage, tried to get some tackles for loss. Mm -hmm. No sacks tonight, I think only two tackles for loss. What's, has the whole scheme kind of shifted? Are you still no, I mean, if you watch, you watch the film, we pressured tonight. They did a very good job picking up the pressure. Um, uh, but I, I, I would think our pressure rate was probably at the same that it was in the LSU game. It was, it was a different deal. You know, you're not playing against, they weren't a spread team. They didn't spread you out. They created. Uh, <clears throat> some bigger surfaces, they played two tight ends and three tight ends, you know, different than, you know, you played the LSU game, there's a lot of empty, um, a lot of no tight ends, you know, and, and sometimes you, you can get home a little bit easier in, in those pressure situations. Um, but we, we didn't play well enough to, to win tonight, so. Do you think your defensive pass, uh, defense, do you think your defense secondary played well, acceptable tonight? I, I have to, I'm, I'm, we're going to watch the tape and make corrections. I'm not going to make any uh, conjectures here in terms of like one position or another position. That's just not what we do. You know, we win as a team and we lose as a team. Um, and that's what it is. But I think our, our biggest issue tonight was what, rushing the football. They threw for 179 yards. They threw for 290 yards. I mean, they ran for 290 yards. It was our rush defense tonight that we were very concerned about. How close was Dorian to be able to go? He was unavailable. When, when did you find out he was unavailable? What's that? When did you find out he was unavailable? Was it? Earlier. We, we talk about all things, and then the doctors and Dorian, you know, put their heads together in terms of where we are, and, you know, made a, made a decision today that he was going to go tonight. Do they come to you during warm-ups on the field in the locker room today, or? Just, we, we just talk it through as a group, and they told me he was on the field. The question's because, because we saw him warming up. Yeah, yeah. was it so. between then? We saw after, practice this week, too. Was it after warm-ups, before yeah, the game? He was unavailable. Okay. Expecting back. I don't expect anybody back. I don't have any any answers to the crystal ball. So we will see how the week goes. And 
on how our training session goes, and then we'll get ready. You know, we had kids who practiced all week long that were unavailable to, today. They practiced Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then were unavailable on Saturday. So you guys think I'm trying to evade something. We had a kid who practiced all week long that didn't play in the game tonight. So I can't tell you if someone practiced all week long, on game day something happens and then they can't play. They're unavailable. So when they're unavailable, they're unavailable. Under the premise that we've talked about before, you are what your record says you are. Yep. After these two losses against two of the toughest teams in the conference, what is this team right now? We're five and four. That's our, that's our record. So that's What's your four assessment four. of the performance at we're, five and we're, four? We're five and four. I think this team battles. I think this team's really resilient. I love their effort. I love how they approach every day. I love how they train. I love everything they do. But there's certain things we got to clean up to win games in this league, especially we know how difficult it is, difficult it is to win games in the world. We talked about that coming in here. So. You know, that's that's part of the deal. You know, we, gotta, we, we know what type of football team Utah is. You know, you watch what they did to Arizona State in here. You know, they, Arizona State had a lead at halftime. They scored 28 on the answer. You could not go on that game. So um, every every game in this league is about no matter who you are and you know, who, who you're playing. And, and you got to come to play every single week. And you got to follow the plan to win. Um, you got to prevent X plays. You got to you got to create turnovers. Um, you got to prevent yourself from turning the football over. Um, you got to be disciplined in the penalty game. Um, and then you got to win in special teams, you know. So that, that plan to win doesn't change on a weekly basis. It's still the same things um, that affect the outcome of the game. So well, that's the last question. Is coming being resilient and coming close enough in your four? You need, you need results at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, you just asked me about my team. I wasn't justifying anything else besides that one. So that wasn't what I was saying. So I think you misinterpreted that. Okay, but to my question, is is what you said enough at this point? What do you mean? What is enough? Being close and fighting hard. I didn't say being close and fighting hard was enough. He asked me what we were. I said we're five and four. That's what we are. We're five and four. So we still got a, a lot of football to be played this season. Okay, thanks. And I wouldn't bet against that group in that room. That, that group in that room is awesome. And I love those kids. So we'll be right back at it. Those guys will get a, a, get in on uh, Monday for film and, and, and lift in. We'll be back on the field on Wednesday and Friday next week and then get ready to go and play our next game. So. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thanks, sir.